Hello and welcome to CBT Micronugget on Citrix Certified Advanced Administrator. How to advance your Citrix career. I'm Casey Wood and I am a CCAA. The first step is understanding where the CCAA fits in Citrix overall certification path. To begin with, the entry level certification is the Citrix Certified Administrator. And then this one is the Citrix Certified Advanced Administrator. The Advanced Administrator focuses exclusively on ZenApp 6.5. It validates your thorough and deep understanding on how to deploy, manage, and especially troubleshoot the Citrix ZenApp 6.5 application virtualization product. This is the second of four certifications that Citrix offers. Beyond that, they have a Citrix Certified Enterprise Engineer for virtualization, and finally, they have the Citrix Certified Integration Architect. Let's go over to the CCAA website and find out more about what is required for the Advanced Administrator Certification. Now that we're at the Citrix ZenApp 6.5 Advanced Administration site, you'll see under description the five topics that are required to make sure that you know for the exam. Now you may have noticed if you've passed the Citrix CCA that there were many more topics on the CCA than there are for this one. The difference is that this one each topic requires much more in-depth and deep understanding of these, especially the troubleshooting section. So make sure that when you study for this exam, you really understand the five topics here and have a deep and thorough knowledge of these. Let's click on the preparation guide on the right side, and I'll show you some more details about the exam. Okay, now we have the preparation guide open. You'll notice that the exam number is 1Y0-A22. That's going to be the exam number that you're going to eventually want to register when you're ready to take the test and you register on the VIEW website. So there are a couple of things that I want to stress for this particular exam. This is an advanced administration exam. So the level of knowledge that you're going to be expected to know and understand it's going to be far greater than it was for the original Citrix CCA exam in ZenUp 6.5, especially on the troubleshooting section. You're going to need to know a lot more about how to troubleshoot issues when they do come up. So I strongly recommend that you read this entire preparation guide and don't skip over any sections. I want to highlight just a couple of sections on this guide, so let's go down to the table of contents. Uh, sections 4, 5, and 7 are usually the important parts of this particular preparation guide. So section 4 deals with the weights. It, sh it shows the general categories and how much or how or what's the percentage for each particular category on the exam. Section 5 is very important because it it tends to break down a little more of the types of information that you're going to be tested on so that you can better gear your study habits on what you need to know. And then section 7 it's also a very important section because it deals with simulation item types. These are questions that are going to be using a simulated GUI just like you would in the real world. So it's going to test your real world knowledge and experience on how to use the product rather than just answering a multiple choice question. So let's go down to section 4 and I want to show you the exam, exam weight section. Okay, so in the exam weight section, you'll notice again that there are less sections than there were in the original Citrix CCA exam. But that's because each section has a higher weighting percentage. And you're going to need to know more about each particular section. So for example, the troubleshooting section says 30%. That means generally, in not, not an exact science, but generally about 30% of the questions are going to be dealing with troubleshooting of ZenApp 6.5. Now if we go down to section 5, there are a couple parts of section 5 that I want to show you. Okay, in section 5.2 it shows you some basic knowledge that you're going to need to know and it also shows you some CTX articles that you can reference. Now I'll come back to the CTX articles in just a moment to show you where to find those. But if we go further down in section 5, I want to show you the objectives. This is one of the most important parts because this shows you, this breaks it down by section on the left and then on the right it shows you the objectives in each section. The objectives are the types of information in that section that you're going to be expected to know. And, and you can scroll down here in the different sections under the monitoring section, scaling section. Now if you remember the troubleshooting section was one of the biggest sections. And as you can see here, there's more objectives over here on the troubleshooting section. 
So you can rest assured that there's going to be probably more questions on troubleshooting than anything. Now let's go down to section 7, like I said about the simulation exam questions. This is a, if you haven't dealt with simulation exam questions before, they might be somewhat intimidating, but really they're not that bad because all they're doing is they're simply giving you real world scenarios of how you would actually operate the product in the real world. In the real world, you're not going to install your ZenApp server by answering questions of choose A, B, C, D, or E. You're, you're going to have to click on things, right click on things, type in things and whatnot. And that's, a, that's what this is trying to do. Okay, in section 7.3 is the simulation section. You'll notice if I scroll down here, the first thing you're going to be presented with is a scenario and a task. The scenario is a general background of what the environment looks like, and the task is the task that you're supposed to complete to successfully answer the question. So once you read that, then you click on the simulation button, and when you click on that button, it will actually bring up an environment that looks similar to something you would have in your real world. When you get this graphical interface, you will be expected to perform the task for whatever the task was, was required of you. After you complete the simulation, you, you click continue and you will submit the answer and go on to the next question. So one thing I, I do want to stress again folks is make sure you read this exam in, it, in its entirety because it's only going to help you for your exam to make sure that you know what you're going to be tested on and it gives you an opportunity to to further hone your skills if you're weak in any particular area. Now let's go back to section 5 to the CTX articles I was talking to you about earlier and I'll show you where to find those. So if we scroll back up to section 5 and you'll see some CTX articles referenced here like CTX 108812. If you wanted to know more about how to configure Windows Network Load Balancing and Web Interface, let's, let's open up a web browser and, and go to that CTX article. So what I will do is I will just right click on here and, and copy it so that we can paste it in there. And the website we're going to is support.citrix.com. And if you, if you notice on the left side here, there's a search window. You can actually just paste in the CTX article and click search. And the very first one is the CTX article. You'll see right there, CTX108812. If you click on it, you can get information on how, how to do this. So you can scroll down, requirements, procedures, show step by step how to do something. It's a great learning resource and, and it's free folks. So make sure you take advantage of looking at these CTX articles. In this nugget we looked at some of the things you need to know for the Citrix Certified Advanced Administrator Examination. I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.